We've been talking about the NBA playoffs, and obviously we're at the NBA Finals. The Dallas Mavericks overcame the Timberwolves, and we'll see the Boston Celtics in the NBA Finals. I'm probably going to save my Finals predictions and breakdown and everything for Wednesday's episode. This episode, I want to focus on what we saw with the Mavericks Timberwolves series and how how most of this and and most of the reason why the Dallas Mavericks find themselves in the NBA finals is because of moves that they've made not just last year but at this all this trade deadline I say that it's so important to make the right decisions and get the right people in the room because of how beneficial it is for the long run. And as we talk about how beneficial it is to have the right people in the right room, it's also, I guess on the flip side, on the other end, it can be franchise damaging to have the wrong people or make the wrong decisions that's kind of the that's kind of the thing that isn't talked about as much in sports but is understood that one move one decision can completely wreck a franchise forever now obviously forever is a long time but We've seen franchises that have made one decision or two decisions and have yet, for instance, as much as I don't like bagging on my franchise, this is easy because I've lived in a era where most of my favorite teams haven't been good. Now, we've had some teams, like the Mystics have been really good, uh, even though they're not the best this year. Uh, the Nationals, I've seen the Nationals win a championship, the Mystics win a championship, the Capitals win a championship. I've seen that. But when you look at something like the Wizards and you hold on to Bradley Bill for too long or you trade, you trade away Gilbert Arenas or if you're the Washington Commanders and you you get Albert Hainsworth, or you trade Champ Bailey for Clinton Portis. Those decisions can completely change the, the trajectory of a franchise. The thing that's so brilliant about what this Mavericks team has done in these last few years is A lot of the decisions that they made should not have worked. A lot of those decisions that they've made should have been on the other end of the pendulum. The decision that or the decisions that can derail a franchise or derail a superstar. I was never one of those people that ostracized or uh pretty much castrated Kyrie for his off the court beliefs his off the court views i think that a lot of people forget that while yes these people are famous why yes these people are in the limelight why yes these people make millions upon millions of dollars they are still individuals and they are still people that have their own beliefs and have their own thought process and have their own way of processing things. And I think a lot of people also forget to state that we do not know these people. Obviously, because we see them play and we're fans of them, we think that we know them, but we don't. And Kyrie Irving, another thing that I think that people discredit is a lot of times we see these people at young ages and we literally see these people grow up mature and some people it takes longer and it takes 
situations to happen for them to reach their level of maturity that they're going to reach. And we've seen Kyrie since a, a teenager, man. And we also, a lot of fans like our stars, a lot of fans like the people that we look up to to live a certain way, and that's just not always the case. Yeah, I do think that it was a mistake that, you know, Kyrie Irving posting the article or posting the documentary that had anti-Semitic viewpoints in it. I don't think the whole thing was anti-Semitic, but it did have viewpoints. And I do think that Kyrie Irving could have handled the situation better, especially, and I said that. I said, if you dis- if if somebody feels disrespected, it doesn't really matter what your intent was. It's just what happened. And that's on you now to, I guess, rectify the situation if you want to. Uh, So I do think that Kyrie Irving could have handled that situation better, but I hated how people, his, his name was drugged through the mud, how his, just his reputation was, was shattered. I hated all of it. I just didn't feel the punishment. I didn't feel the vitriol that came behind that decision was really warranted and then now people started highlight and there is a bit of factualities when you talk about how some of Kyrie's stints ended whether we talk about Cleveland whether we talk about uh, Boston whether we talk about the the Nets they may not have ended the smoothest but It goes back to the point of you're watching somebody mature. Yes, some poor decisions were made, but you're watching someone mature. I say all that to say, while I was never one of those people that killed Kyrie for his personal beliefs, because again, we don't know this person personally outside of what they want to give us. We don't really know Kyrie, and it's, it's not for us to know Kyrie. He is his own person. I was never one of those people to kill him for his beliefs, kill him for some of the actions that he did that people would deem quirky or people would deem out there. But I was one of those people that was critical and was one, one of the, was one of those people that, uh, didn't, didn't think that Kyrie's move to Dallas was going to work. I was actually very vehement in saying, I just didn't understand why you did it because I didn't think Kyrie Irving was one of those people that could play alongside Luka Doncic. We saw how Luka Doncic has struggled playing alongside stars. We saw him struggle playing alongside Christos Porzingis, playing alongside Jalen Brunson. And we've also seen Kyrie Irving struggle playing alongside stars outside of LeBron James. Again, he didn't really work with Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. Now, yes, obviously they were younger, but he didn't work there. Due to injuries and a bunch of other things, it didn't work with KD and James Harden. So I just didn't think... I thought it wasn't going to work. I just didn't think it was going to be a perfect blend. But the reason why I think it's worked so well and the reason why I was wrong is the Kyrie that we're used to seeing, the Kyrie that we saw in Cleveland or at the end of Cleveland, the Kyrie that we saw in Boston, the Kyrie that we saw in Brooklyn is not this Kyrie. You're seeing a mature. You're seeing a battle tested. You're seeing a humbled Kyrie. And one thing that I know about people is when you see something that you don't have or you see something that could better you 
and vice versa, when you see something, when you're in a situation that can better you and you can better the situation, maturity, maturity usually steps in and say, hey, this is where we're at. I can't do what I've done before because what I've done before has not gotten, gotten me the gotten me the places that I need to go or has gotten me where I need to go. Let, let's not get it twisted. The reason why Kyrie Irving is not on the All-NBA 75 team, the reason why Kyrie Irving is not going to help Team USA this year represent the world in the Olympics is not because of what he does on the court. As we've seen in this series, which we'll talk, which we'll break down a little bit in a second, Kyrie Irving is still a, a amongst the top guards in the league. He's still an incredible, I mean, incredible basketball player. So let's let's not get it twisted. Kyrie Irving isn't isn't falling off, but his reputation has taken a major hit. All maybe some that was generated by him and some that maybe was media fueled. But Dallas did not get or Dallas got a mature Kyrie. And I think that a lot of people saw how the season ended last year and was like, oh yeah. I was one of those people, so I'm gonna I'm gonna admit it. I saw how the season ended last year and I was like, yeah, see, this is not gonna work. And I saw how this season began and I was like, yes, yeah, it's, it's not. But again, we saw the different Kyrie. We're seeing a different Kyrie. And seeing a different Kyrie in turn allows us to see a different Luca. You see, all the stuff that we talk about with Kyrie Irving, you can talk about with Luca in a sense of you can be as great as you are. Luca is one of the best players in basketball. Let's not get it twisted. When we talk about the game of basketball, Luca is one of the best. But even in that, you need to know how to play with others. You need to know how to utilize your team. Because as great as one person is, you will. there's never been a team in the history of basketball that has won a championship because they have one good player and everyone else. And that one good player never integrated everyone else. I don't think Jalen Brunson would have been who Jalen Brunson is now if it wasn't for what happened in Dallas. I don't think Christoph Porzingis would be as good as he is now if – he didn't go to Dallas, but I do think that a lot of those two situations not working was because of the lack of rigidness or the rigidness, I'll say, that Luca had. But when you see Kyrie and you see someone that has in, in certain instances have struggled the same way Luca has struggled as far as team building, and you see that, okay, I'm going to, I'm, Kyrie is going to dim his light so Luca. Can shine brighter. I think you see that as Luca, and you see that as Kyrie, and say, "Okay, we're gonna get this together." And then on top of that, you go out and get key pieces like a Daniel Gafford, like a PJ Washington. Oh man, you stayed to the end of the video. I appreciate you. If you like what you saw, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you'll never miss any content from your boy. You can also go back and watch past episodes, past clips, and don't forget that the Unpopular Podcast new episodes drop every Wednesday and Saturday. Appreciate you.